Okay. Start. Right. Uh, you guys can sit closer. So, welcome and thank you for coming to the November version of the Golang Malaysia Golangira or KL Golangira. <laughs> so far, we don't have uh, branches uh, from other states yet. So. Uh, we, we are still eligible <laughs> to call ourselves uh, Malaysia, Golang Malaysia. <laughs> Until that's a Golang Penang or Jawa Maru or Kota Kinabalu, come on. Nice. Right, and, uh, and the current version is uh, 1.13.4. So, uh, and uh, this month is the uh, anniversary of the Golang language. It turns 10 this year. And that is how you get swags afterwards. <laughs> uh, just, just a pin, yeah. And uh, feel free to take pictures and post it to uh, like the Facebook group or event or meetup. So I'm going to compile those and send it to, let's say to Google. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, if you don't mind. So take pictures. And let's start with, uh, uh, for those that are new to the meetup format is that uh, the, for this year we actually, uh, in most of the meetup, we follow this uh, convention called Bus Corners that will introduce us to some of the uh, latest going on with the, whatever that we, we are interested in. Uh, in this case for Golang meetup, it's uh, about Golang tools. So Golang has a new resource hub called go.dev, uh, apparently it's supposed to be uh, uh, where all the community resources are supposed to go afterwards. So, go supposedly go the Golang official website will just to be just be a resource site to download the 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 software itself. So, and we have our two thousand nineteen uh, Go Developer Survey is up. So if you uh, feel free to contribute, uh, put our name on the map. And I'm going to show this. This is a uh, source graph. Uh, if you find uh, Golang's uh, the initial offering of the very opinionated style guide, uh, too little, and you want to expand, and you want to find an, another reference point, uh, source graph actually published their, their style guide. So for those that are interested to know like how people how other people or organizations uh, write their Golang code uh, check it out uh, yeah. that looks very generic though. yeah um right just yeah is it's there like any any programming it's like actually for any but um <laughs> it's there for you know like in the organization you don't have you have you, you need to onboard people to follow like you you have to train up juniors to pick up by word of code. That is, you want them to follow the certain style guide. So uh, yeah. In case I don't think it's uh, clear enough, can you just go down there? Use uh, okay. This is a very, 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 very important. When picking names, please pick pronounceable names and do not use emoji names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Golang actually supports that. I uh, also support Unicode characters. That's how that's how they come up with the pseudo generic. Kind of a template, like C plus template thing, like because they use the Eskimo symbol. So, so yeah, uh, try not to use Unicode in your code, please, or you screw up. Like it's, some of the it's uh, very much in the vein of uh, in programming Go. One of the problems is to be make sure that everything mm. in when you actually program in Go, it's boring, it's clear, it's simple, and try not to be too clever. Yeah. So all the fancy Unicode things you can do with Go, yes you can, but please don't. Yeah, just because you can, it doesn't mean that you'll do it. So, and the uh, one that uh, Han mentioned just now, uh, if you want to a, if you want to have a self-contained binary that uh, contains all your HTML file and everything, and serve as a, word, like, uh, in a way, like virtual file system light, uh, there's a new one coming up called uh, Packager. 
The one that we we have been using uh, is uh, from stat is is called static. Uh, unfortunately, <coughs> uh, since one point thirteen, there's some uh, they fix the proper API. So uh, with the file basically, uh, in during zip, uh, they fix some of the timing stuff. So it apparently broke some of the aesthetic uh, or some probably some of the packages that relies on this uh, behavior. So. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Don't expect it. Yeah. Uh, PKJ is uh, one one of the latest package offering. So basically, you compile your whatever uh, non Go kind of uh, assets and and represent it as a basically as a big byte. So, so, but uh, you can actually access them uh, as a virtual uh, file system like kind of system. Just like how you uh, access your file in your file system. Check it out. So um, this is uh, something that um, for me is uh, very useful, but uh, I found out that not a lot of people know about it because uh, the default linter that uh, let's say if you use the VS Code is not this. Uh, the GoNCI lint actually contains, it's actually uh, consolidates most of the like static checkers and most of the tools for like the basically do this uh, static checking the contain uh, some of the styles guides or recommendation are a bit opinionated but this is a package that's uh, basically one package to rules all the kind of a uh, static checker uh, very very useful um, it contains more recommendation and more rules than the default golang linter if you find them not not opinionated enough <laughs> Uh, this one actually can provide you with more and it, uh, yeah, uh, check it out uh, stick pick into 1.14 it's actually not 0.4 from breakfast it's actually 1.14 we'll be focusing more into uh, optimizations and uh, speed so as usual because uh, Golang is supposed to be boring in terms of the language supposed to be small and always backward compatible. Uh, that concludes the first corner. If anybody has anything to share like that you discovered recently. Uh, maybe not something to share, yeah. but I was wondering if the, uh, the Go standard library is a good um, source of inspiration for code style. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, if you look into it, there's lots of variables that are not yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, depending on the kind of uh, packages. Us. I think it also depends on context. Yeah. So as long as you when you start reading this and uh, for the topic that you know, for the library that for this crypto, it is actually understandable for those programming or using crypto, for instance, in like the library in Go. If you can understand that and it's actually concise enough. That should be uh, uh, the, the way, that, even though you cannot really pronounce that. Because, especially in a crypto library, you cannot pronounce a lot of the function names and even the standards. So, and uh, Go, the, the Go convention is actually uh, the way we name our repos should be camel case, but inside the standard library, there's a lot of uh, flip case. So, you have to check uh, some of them. Some of them are also just a placeholder for the SMD code. So you have to find out which one <coughs> is because you know, some of the higher level ones are actually pretty okay. Like the sort algorithm is actually, sort library is actually pretty good preference. Some of them are not, not necessarily everything, but uh, you can check it out. Okay, thanks. So, uh, I think it's gonna be my talk. Uh, I don't know what, how to call this. It's actually a, a bit of a, everything so i'm going to call it a, a tips and optimization trick tips and tricks and i'll cover some of the topic previously um which is the debugger and profiler and if you're interested uh i don't think i recorded some of it so we can do it again so most of the time you'll be using the bench benchmarker via this command so and a lot uh the the argument uh, online uh, for most people is that 
uh, people like uh, advice against using Go is that there's a GC. So we are too worried about like the allocations, but uh, if we manage our allocation nicely, even allocation itself actually uh, uh, requires a CPU. And if you allocate a lot, of course it takes time and stuff. We we can actually optimize our allocation. So this is the main. Hopefully, this is the main uh, takeaway from the talk. Lah. So uh, on uh, improving the allocation, the GC can be can I mean can not work so hard to clean up uh, whatever that you. The more you have, the more you deallocate. The also the more you allocate, also the slower your program is. So uh, I'm gonna just go through. Uh, assuming that most of you haven't seen the uh, benchmark code, is that this is how you write a benchmark. Uh, send the library. Uh, so your benchmark actually need to start with a benchmark prefix. Then uh, it will be named whatever that is like. And this is the boilerplate basically to loop through. Uh, your function or whatever that is. Uh, I'm gonna um, for this example. I'm using uh, the uh, also cautionary. Uh, do not concatenate your string like this. Instead, try to use something like a builder. So in this case, we are compare. We are running the benchmark and comparing the uh, the different uh, the difference between them. So this is the result. Uh, of course, after you run this uh, command, this is the result. To if you concat them via the plus sign. You see, they each operation takes a lot more time, and you allocate a lot more. And if you use a string builder, look at this. So that's that's the like uh, heaven and hell. Uh, that is a very drastic difference between like uh, doing it correctly. Of course, um, um, the reason the reason behind this is because uh, string. In uh, data structure wise, is like um, uh, in Golang terms, it's like a slice. So whenever you try to expand it, actually, we will try to reallocate a uh, uh, new slice with the new size. So every time you actually recreate a slice or a, a linked list or array, every time you reallocate, whenever you try to expand it this way. So, uh, if you want to know what is actually happening uh, underneath, you can check check it out. String builder. So the so there's a lot of argument about uh how does the stack and heap allocation works in Golang. So I actually copy a long stuff from the the FAQ, but the main thing is this. Uh, stack frame. It's that if. If it cannot basically, if the compiler is basically up to the compiler to decide, if it decided that it will be not referenced, even though it's a supposedly a heap type of a data structure like a, a pointer, it will still be put into the stack frame. And also, like normal uh, data, like that is supposed to be in the stack frame, it's just too big. Also, it will be put, it will be more efficient to put it on the heap. I mean, it makes more sense to put it on the heap. Instead of uh, uh, exhausting the stack frame, so the, the basically this the uh, why do I have to? So um, I'm gonna show you the differences between uh, a stack and a heap allocation. The difference between them. So um, see because um, p heap is actually I'm actually. Um, Copying the reference every single time to a pointer object, and this one I'm just copying the value for stack. So those are the naive uh, thing, but but if your data is actually too big, it still will be put onto the heap. Uh, how do how do we determine that? I'm gonna show you afterwards, but uh, let's look at the results. Heap allocation, as you know, is of course uh, you have so much more expensive so much longer because you have to allocate uh, it and stack is of course uh, the it's not necessarily bad to put on on heap but uh, if you the way you write it uh, that by in this example is it makes so sense to actually um, 
to not prefer this method into this. So be careful with your uh, coding style. Um, so it's much more expensive. So I have a question. Yeah. How do you know where the heap was left? Um, by default, um, pointer type will be allocated on the heap. Yeah, but your A is still local, so you must find that right? No, because I escaped it to the uh, the global. Like, because I actually put it as at the global, so it's actually when global reference the local, then local become a. Uh, because um, a local you actually. Because uh, it doesn't go out of reference. Outside, outside here. Reference, so they yeah, still be yeah. 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 Okay. But this one is I'm just copying the value. Okay. I just put a value there. So this one because I I need to pass the 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 reference to whatever that is outside. Okay. But of course, uh, uh nowadays uh, compared to previous, uh, it's actually much better because um. Uh, Last time, um, if you attended Eric's talk, you had to escape. If you, in order to uh, do a very honest benchmark, you because um, this will be optimized by default. This will be optimized by the compiler and say like, oh, uh, eventually S will be got will, will not be used right. So the compiler will actually optimize up for you. Mm -hmm. And since recently, uh, since recent version after basically and any time after Eric's talk is that. Uh, now that the uh, benchmark occur doesn't actually uh, do this kind of optimization for you, so it's actually fine to put everything inside. But you still have to test it out. Uh, still work case by case basis. So and also another th uh, thing about advice about optimization is some of them might work nicely now, but it might be uh, not necessary afterwards. Like uh, the cop like in the case of. Uh, uh, the Golang maintainers decided that this is a very easy optimization, so they're gonna build the mechanism into the compiler afterwards. I wish I'm gonna show you. So a uh, very naive uh, that demonstration of the difference between a stack and a heap allocation. And um, what, the first yeah. second column? Sorry, the, 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 the bigger number. This is how many times it, it ran during the duration. Of the benchmark, so of course the slower you are, the the less you you, you run. So, and these are the time per operation, yeah, the memory consumption and the kind of allocation per operation. Allocation takes time. So another thing, uh, that um, a tips, um, uh, is that um, um, that's the. You guys know what is a bound check? Because uh, basically, if you have an array, the program needs to figure out uh, how big your array is in order to actually uh, basically optimize the code. So if he doesn't know that what happened here, you actually just, oh, I'm going to check, I'm going to check, and check. Is it the end of that? So the very naive thing to do is actually to do a check on the last object first. So when you when you checked it, it, it's actually because it knows that it ends with this. So uh, it, it doesn't need to provide uh, uh, to do those kind of uh, oh is it is it still uh, inbound 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 something like that. I books. And this is one of the very simple optimization tips. Uh, Ah, damn, I should have put it in two pages because they're gonna spoil it. And the difference between is uh is uh, uh let me open up uh, Eric's. I'm gonna have this. Uh his is uh it was this. So uh ignore the not bound because that is uh uh I'm I'm not trying to I'm not trying to cover any like uh Ex, like extreme uh, uh because uh the way he did is uh, it's very good but um i'm gonna try to make it safer for everyone that is uh you basically he actually the last one is actually optimized using the six pointer but ignore the the last one why i do i show this because this is a uh, version specific uh previously if you don't do a bound check it will be much slower 
and this is also a demonstration that um, if I go back there, that the compiler did it for you. So, uh, and also while I'm figuring the slides, I just discovered that it's actually optimized automatically for you since one point eleven. So now for simple slices, the bound check emulation will be actually done for you for free. So now there's not much difference. Basically, there's no difference because I ran this separately, so it can be up and down. So basically, they are the same because it's actually optimized for you. So some of the optimization tips might be obsoleted after the, the Golang teams uh, decided to do this because it's so because it's so simple to do it. They actually decided <coughs> to just do it for you for free automatically. So if you want to know about more, you can run this when you compile your program. It's going to show you whether this uh, will be bound check. But it only works for simple slices. But most of the case is, uh, in this case, it's a very simple slice. Simple as in this, uh, not complicated like uh, uh, nested or contains other reference and other things. No? So this is the issue. So I, I was surprised as well <laughs> because I joined, because bound check was a, a big thing to optimize. Everybody likes writes about bound like one of the things that when people come talk about uh, optimization in GoLang is that you need to do bound check, but it's done for you. So, so another one uh, is that um, Singpu Singpu is basically to uh, I'm gonna go through like uh, feature by feature actually. Uh, so. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. Singapore is actually um, to avoid creating too many objects. So basically, you are reusing the objects to reduce the kind of allocation. So in this case, this is like our very normal uh, for loop that we actually try to, let's say we try to write something to the buffer. We create a buffer and write something to it. Uh, I'm going to run this reset just to be fair with the other benchmark as well. So it is very common uh, for every uh, iteration, we just cre create something, then we try to do something with it. Very common uh, thick operation. And sync pool is that we will be reusing as much as possible. We will be reusing the, we don't try to uh, create a new object every time, but we will, <coughs> we're going to reuse it. So th this is part of the standard library from the sync uh, library. So the difference is this. If there's no uh, buffer, I'm going to create it or else I'm going to just return the existing one. I'm going to write to it. I'm going to reset and put it back to the pool. So uh, look at the benchmark. It's uh, quite a bit of a difference in some allocation because the sync pool one actually perform much faster and you see it's actually free in terms of uh, allocations in this benchmark because I'm using a very simple example. So if you are create, if you're creating, let's say you are passing a very big document and every single uh, time, like let's say I pass a really big JSON document containing a million kind of uh, J, uh, JSON document and you can actually use Singpu to actually store it and when you deserialize it, you can just, you, instead of creating a new uh, map, uh, object for, for mapping the that. Uh, for mapping the, the JSON document, you are reusing it. But of course, um, be careful when you are handling reference type because whatever that is inside the sync pool will be ran randomly uh, deallocated. So if you have a reference type that, that actually uh, still relate to, because reference type is still um, uh, reference, it will be deallocated as well. So be really careful about the usage. So try to not to store also like uh, complicated things. Also know what you're trying to do. So uh, very cheap for that. So um, I'm actually doing it very fast. Uh, it's quite, It's actually took me much longer to come up with this than than. Uh, and compiler actually. Uh, how many of you actually play with uh, compiler flags? Okay, if this will be more interesting for you. So how do we, what is escape analysis? Escape analysis is actually where the compiler decides whether the, the object should be at the heap or stay at the stack. So um, 
by doing this, adding the actually one M is actually two M is actually more robust. So one M is like two M. One M is actually to see like the the memory. So it actually actually gonna show you, uh, the things that it's trying to optimize it cannot inline. So so it's gonna inline the print. Like what uh? Do you guys know what inlining is? Okay. Inlining. Uh, so just to explain is that in order to reduce the overhead of calling a function, the compiler will inject the print line code here when it generates the code, so that it will be um, you will save up some some overhead, <laughs> but uh, it also produce a bit of uh, a bloat and also um, it also requires the inline function don't require to be not complicated. Like within like depending on the depending on the on the compiler state at that time, but uh conventional wisdom is uh between thirty to forty statements. So it'll be question. I suppose this is actually to my book. Does Go land actually shows you which variable actually does the script? Because I know in PS2 and GoPiece, it doesn't tell you whether it's exactly No, you have to do this. It, it actually going to show you this where you're going to escape. Yeah, but there's Golan actually. No, uh, Unless you somebody write a tool to do this. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you pay for Golan? It doesn't do that. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if there's a, a editor tool for this, but it's actually pretty much no brainer. It's going to show you every line of trying to do whatever. That it would be nice if you just mouse over the Z and it tells you that, oh, Z escapes the <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it, yeah. Uh, somebody do it, please. <laughs> uh, very helpful. Um, and also, we can see if for those people that like to read at assembly, we can also do this. Uh, that's an object. Um, go. Golang actually generates a GCC compatible binary, so you can use existing GCC tool to do it, like pprof uh, and all those like pprof. Uh, if you want like a GD, if you want GBB, uh, uh, well, also might work. But they actually provide you tools to do this as well. Object down is actually uh, Golang also provide the equivalent object down. It's called object down. So uh, escape because my. My source code is actually called escape.go, so escape is the produce uh, uh, binary for this. So if you're if you really want to go into that to see like whether it inline properly or the optimization uh, does properly for GoLang, you can actually uh, do that. I wish uh, to right. I cheat. C shell is good. No, no, no. So, go. Oh, this is just supposed to be good. You say C sharp is good? Yeah, this is C sharp. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you this. It's going to give you everything like the assembly, but the main thing is the last. So, the last one is main.main. .main. If you're interested to see. So, this is actually the code generated. If you're interested, and you can see what actually happened in this, it's actually what inline does is actually copy print line from the print line, print line source code and put it here. So it's gonna just uh, save up on some function call overhead. There's some good and bad. Lah. So it's gonna show you, uh, it's gonna be scientifically show you where things will go to, or like or stack or heap instead of uh, guessing where they go. So, uh, if you want to know more about flex, uh, just go to, and also go you go to compile is actually the equivalent to go build, in case you guys didn't know. So, you can go to compile escape. Right. Yeah. Into, but you can create and <coughs> uh, unlink object file. So if you're interested to the play around, uh, check it out and check out the help as well to show you that uh, what sort of flags to use like print optimization decision. If you want to test like let's say I want to disable optimization, there are some like 
uh, disable bound check, you can you can do like uh, differences between that. Go to com basically this. Uh, check it out. The flags. These are the flags can that can be used by the GC flag. Uh, very useful, but it should be the last resort because uh, all these optimizations should be done at the benchmark level and also profiler is as much as possible this is should be like uh, the last resort unless you want to really like go save up like what sort of uh, uh, operation that you want to you want to save up on certain operation and also uh, for this this is uh, actually uh, been existing for quite a while before even some of uh, the above uh, being finalized is that it's also gonna show you the SSA the uh, go which I forgot the full name of SSA so uh, so if you want to see how the compiler actually optimize your code this is actually the whole flow of the decision on how they I'm gonna show you the line like oh so is this how the Golang compiler optimizes your code and this is the final output uh, in assembly So, if you're interested to really know what is going on with the inner working, but the problem with the all this inner working is that it gets um, updated from time to time because these are the things that are transparent to the developer. But unless you really need that kind of, uh, you know, or just uh, for curiosity's sake, or you really want to know uh, whether it's a comp. I think it's very rare that you need to do this unless you're trying to debug like the, whether the compiler is behaving properly. But if you're interested to know like uh, really want to investigate uh, how the compiler works and then you optimize the way that you write your code then you can actually uh, refer to this spell. Very nice. Actually more than that. So those are the some of the big summary. Actually more than that. There's a lot like all the decisions that it, it, it made to, to optimize your code. Oops. So let's go. Right. So I guess you also have a go to linker. I mean, you have to compile it. Yep. You also have a linker. Uh, go actually, when we when the first when, when you first use it, actually, you have uh, they don't have the go build yet. So previously, you have to build <coughs> and then you link manually. So that was the uh, like before. I think before one, you have to do that. Because when you yeah. run compile, it's not useful with the tool. Like yeah, the, the yeah. it's not linked. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, surprisingly faster than I. I actually spent a lot of time doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it is so fast. No, 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 no. <laughs> I used to have notice. Go to your code, yeah. copy the entire code, yeah. open up the web page, yeah. go to go.gotboat.org. Oh, what is that? What? You guys don't know? Ah. Uh, what? Well, so that is. Go.godbolt.org. Okay? Oh, it's actually. Oh, it's gonna show up here? Yes! Okay, uh, good copy, too. Copy your code. Copy your code. Paste it into this editor. Yeah, this is good enough. <laughs> uh, compiler flex dash M. The top right compiler options. Here. Up, up one, up one, up one. Okay, down. Down a oh, okay. it's dash M. Dash M. Okay. That's it. No need to that gate. Once you mouse over the things on oh, the Oh, dash D. Yeah. Dash D or dash M. Doesn't matter. Dash Remember the, the uh, escape yeah. analysis stuff? Yeah. Right now, it's actually, it tells you if you mouse over the source code on the left, where uh, whether your main is in line. Ah, this is good. Yeah, but you have to share this with everyone. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, I do know, but I, I seen it, but I forgot about it. Okay, now, uh, just the, the example you were showing just now, put dash M in the compiler options. So it's exactly the same rather than the output in. Yep. No, no, compiler options. Uh, they just, so you can see like the. The I escape analysis is all uh, highlighted on the source code yep. on the left. So you don't have to read through the text output. That's so, huh? That's so on Chrome. That's your problem. Go, 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 <laughs> and dash N to disable optimization. This is quite cool. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, because it's so simple, uh, there's nothing much to. What? Why are you so short in one point thirteen? 
Because it's optimized away. I disable the optimization. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cause main is, main doesn't call square. Oh, it doesn't call anything. Yeah. Oh, so it gets removed. Oh, so the compiler is fast smarter. Ah. <laughs> uh, why? Square. Wait. I should, yeah, this is the same, right? Why should I? Uh, 20. Okay. Should be not use. See? It tells you which line compose to what yeah. machine code. And you get the. So let's throw away. Shorter. Oh. But why it doesn't inline? No, you need the dash M. Ah. Compile options dash M. No, dash, dash M is low. Dash M is to show the flags. Yeah, so you mouse over the square now. To the left. Left, 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 left. Yeah, yeah. Square. Square. Come on. This uh, line number five. Okay. Yeah, to the right a little bit. Left a little bit. <laughs> oh, this. Ah! Yeah. Oh, the square. I thought. I, I, I was looking for this. <laughs> the meeting room is which yeah. room again? Can you like square? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta show. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should have named your function with the unit code square. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a good tool. It's definitely very useful if you're in a mood. It's yeah. In a like go play kind of a situation. Yeah. And also is that since the drop down over there, you can actually pick the different uh go uh, back end. You can see whether or not they compile differently uh, over the different versions. Oh we should have the one point four is found. Before that is huge. I just go. So yeah, if uh, anyone is in your hardcore optimization, yeah, please do. Uh, any question? Shit, this is too fast. <laughs> uh, Q and A time, and this is presented by with a uh, good present. And not to worry about this. One is uh, from from Eric, and this for Echo, which is the author for for static, but static no longer works. So like some of the stuff, uh, uh, check it up. I'm gonna share the slides. And Eric's one actually uh, has a lot more. I think let's go through his since I have time. <laughs> oh, it's a uh, it's gonna sh okay. Uh, do you have any example where you have uh, like the struct is uh, a bit complicated and then you, know, you do a lot of application and then oh, it's actually it, it around and things like I didn't actually cover that, but it's actually covered in Eric's <laughs> slide. That's why I say it's uh, nothing much new from that beside like that. Um, there's also um, struct packing. Uh, string and byte conversion has overhead. Uh, initially, I actually wrote this. Uh, the first, I actually initially wrote the first uh, benchmarker with uh, the string and byte conversion, but it was uh, not dra <coughs> dramatic enough compared to this. This is more dramatic, right? So, struct packing. Uh, depending on how you put it, this is uh, too big, and you look at the size of this. Compared to when you organize them nicely, there are some differences as well. But I'm not sure about this because uh, I haven't tested it with the latest version. I'm not sure if they optimize it, but previously it it makes it has some differences. So uh, the way how you put how you organize your variable inside struct matters as well. But I haven't, uh, I actually haven't uh, tested all that. Why don't you just copy to both and have it? I'll just run the benchmark. Uh. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so let's. US code is the best. Coming from Emacs. <laughs> um, I'm gonna call it pack. Make it bigger. I call it main. Okay. Okay, let's run this. Let's run one by uh, one by one. one. <laughs> because twenty first century is nice. Let's copy the results. Differences. Moving is actually faster. Yep. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yep. Uh, is it correct? Let's see. Just right. Yep. Just right. Try to write it until you get the result you want. <laughs> no, I'm gonna just. Confirm it. <laughs> I'm gonna just confirm it because uh, these things are actually not. Depending on how the compiler optimizes it, so it's actually not necessary. Let's just run it. Huh. <laughs> yep, <laughs> two is actually faster. <laughs> <laughs> but one, I can, one, there's extra, <clears throat> but there's extra allocation. But the rest are actually much smaller than. Is it because of the the computer? Can you run locally? It's local. It's local. Oh, it is local. <laughs> Wait, are you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see. It's see, all, 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 all these things might change. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, doesn't work anymore. Uh, if Eric's watching, so uh, I'm not. So, uh, everyone using this base code, uh. Yeah. Why not? It's easy to install. Easy to configure. Just if you want to start, just install this. Oh yeah, uh, if you are if you not uh, this one uh, don't like VS Code, Why does you it always get the uh, GoLand. I think GoLand uh, right now has uh, what? Why does it come Some up? Some percentage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's not with the anniversary sales Who who is not using VS Code? What what you use? GoLand. <laughs> Can you do this easily? No, no. Yes, yes. Can you do this easily? Yeah. Uh, forget about the extension. Yeah, forget about. See, forget about. The, I don't have to remember the extension. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm gonna connect to my. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna connect to my server. Memory is overrated. <laughs> what? But because you run everything, because basically you run everything. Externally, so you only need the memory to run VS Code. <laughs> uh, basically, the extension runs uh, remotely as well. So that's the one of the impressive part. Okay, it's it's, it's achievable with Emacs. I'm an Emacs user. And you can, you know Emacs can do everything, but you have to. Uh, if it work, it doesn't work. Then you spend a half a day like trying to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone still is it Eclipse? Um, uh, if you have a lot of memories, uh, unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> Why? Why would you punish yourself so? <laughs> uh, try out VS Code, actually, much easier. Bola, Bola is okay. Yeah. Yeah, VS Code is pretty nice. Uh, Eclipse should be fine, but uh, I think the footprint is slightly higher nowadays, not comparable to other lightweight. Uh, lightweight. Electron. Electron is lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Can you go back to your struct tag this one? Oh, struct, that one? Struct tag? Yes. Yeah, the information. Oh. Uh, yes. oh, actually. So, uh, you, uh, we actually need to uh, evaluate them uh, from time to time for some of this.
So don't be like Eric where he do hyper optimization and the next version of the Uh that's that hyper optimization. That was his advice as well. Like, all these uh very might change from time to time depending on how the maintainer is. So like. which one is faster? It's supposedly <laughs> Supposedly this was uh, slower uh, for this his benchmark. <laughs> but that could be oh no, it's actually slower. So but you have you save on allocation. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. You save on allocation. If, if oh, that is correct. That could be because of the alignment. But your four forty and four eight four. It's like you know that one is like uh, when you align the sixty four bit machine. So your integer have to be at least at sixty four bit, right? So that one is like you require like a three allocation. Oh, oh good. I didn't know about <laughs> <that. laughs> well, what I'm talking for my three allocation. But the total size is uh, the same, isn't it? Total size is actually uh, memory use per operation is less, but you have allocation. If you want to save on allocation. Well, why would the second just write? Okay, just write the whole thing. Uh, allocation. Uh, if it's too big, you can affect the rest afterwards anyway. So I think this is a simple glimpse into that. But uh, I don't think this is necessary right, for for most of the situation. But if you want to see more, actually, uh, I actually has his uh, whole track recorded. He actually did a very uh full introduction into all these things, like uh, recorded within like one and a half hour. So it's a very long track. But those are, these are my, because, uh, because we see a lot of new faces, so this is my new intro to the, to the benchmark and on how some of the simple inner workings of uh, Golang data structure and also the compiler helps. So any question? <laughs> Apparently I finished too fast. I have a broader question maybe. Yeah. Um, do you guys know of any good uh, runtime compilers for Go? So maybe something that's more like an APM Interruption or APM. APM is like Prometheus, right? No. Uh, APM, like new Relic. Yeah, new Relic. New Relic. Prometheus. Yeah. <coughs> Prometheus. Uh, I use New Relic for PHP and it's, I actually really like it for PHP. And I'm not new, new Relic has, has a driver for Golang as well. Okay, so it instruments, uh, you can compile it in and yeah. it's instrumented yeah. that way? Okay. Uh, the open source uh, alternative is Prometheus. But if you want really a uh, light one, it's a uh, Yes, it's called uh, Golang Wad Was. I forgot. Uh, X Wad. is the built in one that give you, but that give you some uh, information, but it's actually not as structured as a uh, new relic or Prometheus. Okay. So. But you do have to yeah. mention uh, what sort of metrics you want to measure. So inside your code, then you actually have to uh, track the sort of things you want to measure. Of course, you can easily measure the uh, the memory use, the allocations, and yeah, all those other simple things. stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, I think I'm thinking about something that can go more like a functional. Or if you want a uh, profiler, actually updated that uh, approved. Oh. Profiler is actually built in uh, that you can see if you, but this is not, uh, if you try to run a beta version and you, you are actually exposing uh, on how you can actually go and read about it, but pprof is actually built in, so it exposes something like this, so then you can hook into that and run your profiling. Uh, do I have for example here? No, uh, it's a live demo, so, so you can... Yeah. Does pprof work more like um, you give it one in your profile and then you can see the output rather it, than something passive that keeps something? Uh, it's, it actually collect uh, your, it's actually collect like a um, CPU or memory dump regularly. It's like, it's a dump actually. It's like a debugger kind of way to see, like I want to see but it provides a value of uh, this, like uh, let's say this value, in this case like uh, for example, this let's say this line is actually takes a lot of mem uh, memory. Then you're gonna show it took a uh, force. Like let's say you run a ten second kind of a, a profile, so CPU profile, and this actually occupied four second, and then it took a uh, five hundred uh, meg, and this actually like a uh, two hundred k something. Like that. It shows you the stats of that. But uh, the way you use it is like a debugger. So 
if you, you have to go in and type things up, it doesn't show you everything. Okay. But uh, if you want to, uh, for APM like, it will be like APM, you put in uh, points to trace some uh, new relic and also Prometheus. Prometheus is a, it's a free and open source one, uh, works directly with Grafana as well. Okay. So that's what we use it. I see. Uh, uh, if you want the snapshot in time, P4, uh, I think just Google for P4 example, there will be some uh, of example output of it. So, yeah, so idea yeah. of uh, what you can actually come here. So, so, long running, normally we just use uh, Omidis uh, to actually get the metrics on certain things. But once you, for instance, uh, at certain point in time, that you, not this one. Uh, you want to know how is your server program oh, yes, right now? Okay, you can scroll down. So, so after you run P12 uh, on a live system, the example output for you to see this is actually a snapshot in time where the memory is actually uh, being located and used. And, uh, uh, I don't think this is actually a good example because it's actually too. Uh, too, too trying to explain code. everything. No, it's trying to explain. Scroll down a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Uh, there is actually one Block? free code cam. So for more detailed one, uh, this cross the entire article. But this uh, requires you to run the the one with the PPROF boot on. You yeah. need to put the <laughs> So when you initiate contact with your backend to actually start this one, you actually tell them to it's just like the uh, the debugging the profiler in JavaScript. So you actually start profiling and then five seconds later stop profiling. So you will actually take a snapshot and okay, just run it how, how things look like, for instance, uh, yeah. how many Go routines are running, uh, how, how many of these, uh, <coughs> which functions are being called the most, uh, how long is being spent in which functions. And uh, if you're not familiar, of course, uh, most of the time, uh, at least for me, uh, Memory location took up a lot of calls and it is actually the space. So that's why we went into such great detail about how not to uh, optimize so that you do not need to allocate memory in the first place. Because once a lot of things is actually optimized away, I find that a lot of it is memory location and garbage collection. So you may want to be very careful in which functions that is actually a hotspot in your uh, program. Make sure that at least don't use up so much memory allocations because over time that hurts. Of course, so just copy trigger benchmark you don't really see. So I'm gonna do a let's say top ten. It's not. You need to do something first. Because right now, this is like. Oh, I run some. <coughs> oh. This bench party can be okay. Can it also show a real uh, top line? What do you want? Uh, it's opposed to a um, time that's spent in the CPU. So it can be like if you're static. waiting for an external service or a database call or a web server call. I think that is a. Uh, People is a. Is a it's it's just a, like a collection of uh, it's it's not for that like, it's a, if you want to that kind of information is a APM right? okay. okay. So people just doesn't collect everything. Ah. It's just uh, it's a collect the snapshot, snapshot of certain uh, and it's, in this specifically is the memory and the CPU. Okay. But CPU will be because uh, CPU will be upon you collect you gonna you gonna you're gonna store and wait for it to collect like let's say 10 minutes, 10 seconds kind of for example in order for you to analyze it. I've not actually uh, done this before but it's huge possible. Is it possible to use both systems to actually dump the list of both things uh, currently running? So at least you know which one is actually good. I know that using the debugger, the Delft DLE, uh, you can actually uh, dump in terms of uh, which both things are running and what they're actually executing and whether they're going to put input or not. Uh, so I'm not sure whether you can actually attach that to a live program or whether or not you can write a people flight uh, debugging module to yeah, that's too late. It should be possible. Let me try it. 
should be possible. Just do a double check. Okay, I'm gonna run. Then I'm gonna run the the ah uh, damn. The profile also depends on the the kind of type. Oh, or did I? Uh, I ignored it. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna show you some. I think I commented some of the expensive parts because I did a live. So let's look at the example. So actually, gonna show you, if you want to show, I uh, can show you a graph feed as well for the tree of uh, of memory usage and also the reference. No, I don't just wait. I'm gonna just go through it. Let me fix the code. Since we have time. Okay. Seventeen. Oh, because I removed the waste cycle function. Let's run it again. Oh. Just record it. Okay. Here we go. Oh, damn. Let's see whether I can see here. What? Um, you know what? Oh, profile. Let's call it. Quiet. I think what Viking would be interested in is that if you have a web server and you found that uh, the Go program is spending 100% CPU somewhere, you want to figure out which routine is actually <coughs> for the CPU. Profiler. Profiler at that point in time. I think Profiler will be uh, probably used one, one time, but also um, external services are probably there. Uh, another if you, thing that uh, either external could be like the disk, some some sort of iOS or the, the uh, combination of them, uh, uh, the APM of the system and and then combine with a uh, like profiling or something. Like that. If you want more expensive uh, option, there is a uh, tracing, but it's a uh, very it's very space uh, hungry. Yeah. I like all the straight traces. There's actually uh oh, open traces. That that one is that depending on the supported one, you can actually trace the entry and exit point. The one I think mostly is that people just will be using the more Windows type way where yeah. you use uh, microservices. Not uh, what was specific uh, <coughs> uh what what class was always called you address uh, tracking languages. You don't know where things are, how how things are. Something like that. Oh, now it works. Uh, service map. Oh, uh, oh, cumulated. Uh, Chilion. Yep. Ivan has a question on YouTube. Yep. You want to answer him? Yeah, yeah sure. What was it's here. Uh, says, uh, says uh, why does go not automation so this mesh yeah. so this mesh or related software I don't want to answer him <laughs> yeah I made a mistake of answering him so okay. yeah. says Rust <laughs> does not do that yeah it doesn't uh, it's up to the yeah. it's, I'm not a compiler <laughs> oh shit I forgot how to use it oh top 10 um, okay. how do I do a filter again? Middle. Shit. 
Ik ga het weer. Nee, nee. Oh, main, then. Uh, cube, cam is a cumulative. So, where? So, in this case. If I don't know what happening, like I have a, I have a loop function that runs somewhere that takes up. This bit. Yeah. I need to revise that. I forgot about this. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, basically, check it out. Uh, very useful. When you need it, it's very useful, but you don't have to do it often. So, that means that you generate the plane graph based on that people. Yes. Yeah. So, people is basically a uh, good dump of the things in the session running yep. in, uh, in a certain format, people format. Yep. So, there are other tools. There's one of the tools, it's the plane graph tool. So, if you're familiar with plane graph, that tool <coughs> is. Effectively takes the people yeah. and generates a plane graph, which uh, should actually show you at least a lot of where the components are. There are a few ways to use a uh, pprof. One is the the web server one is the direct one, but you can also program it in to like at certain time write down this into a prof. And also, if you are not sure and you have a for like test a benchmark, you can also dump your benchmark result into a prof. So you can use a pprof tool to analyze it or also dump it to the plane graph. You see where things go wrong, but most of the time when we need reprof, it means that we don't know where what went wrong somewhere. But the uh, benchmark benchmarking actually normally will stop most of the the issue, but uh like still happens to be. You know, we should be logging a reprof for you right now for every thirty seconds. For me, a lot of the issues. <laughs> Uh, trying to play the playing game is uh, for that issue is the external I/O that is the uh, causing issue, but but the uh, we don't know whether it, it blocks on something or not. So that is something I think that is what interested to you, right? Whether your service block on whether like uh on database or on the external uh, let's say REST API. Yeah, it's just something I I probably um uh, interesting to know what's being done in the whole world compared to. Uh, there's a lot of it is a, a different approach to actually tackle the problem, but there's a lot of it is uh, logging. It's basically APM, so you'll be customizing exactly what you want to measure. For instance, you know, but it's a little bit manual. Every single external request that you want to measure, for instance, you actually start <coughs> measure this, measure this, yeah. measure this well, so it becomes a library for in Prometheus, a okay, log how long it takes for this one. So it means that you collect the metrics over time of all the cases. Pprof is something means that once you actually start, it goes in ridiculous detail, but it means that uh, there's some CPU and memory over there. For that particular time, you're actually doing the same thing to log all the interesting. Uh, nope, I won't. It doesn't do. Yes. Oh, different, different no, I won't. In case I won't is listening. Ivan is listening. I don't know. Right side face. Yeah. I don't know why it doesn't do that. <laughs> you should ask the Golang maintainer in the GitHub issue. <laughs> so for your reference, you should give them uh, some tips on how Rust optimize, optimize it as well. So Ivan is uh, uh, our resident Rust guy, yeah. which is uh, uh, yeah asking a lot of uh, yeah for curiosity. Yes. Related uh, questions. Is it's not the competition per se, but uh, uh, at least uh, I think uh, there is some interest in Rust innovation. It's not just uh, you know, all the mundane languages. Hey, is Python on? Hmm? Python is on. Okay, it's on. Python 2 is on. There's a funeral for Python 2. I'm gonna start streaming. Funeral. What's the funeral? 
I, I don't know some of this. Ah, swimming. <laughs> He's the organizer. So pilot two is supposed to face up uh, next year, uh, January, I think. So we, we should we should actually bake a gold cake. So one birthday, one you know. Oh, they actually made a cake for pilot funeral. It was a pretty nice looking pilot funeral cake. <laughs> when, when is it? I don't know. <laughs> There's a cake. Uh, yeah. So, um, there are a few things uh, that I help out. Like, mainly, I think uh, benchmark helps a lot. If not, uh, normally debugger is very, is very seldomly used for me. Profiler is more useful, but only when uh, you you don't know like where where went wrong. But if you format your function nicely, actually the benchmark will show you what went wrong. But yeah, the problem with a uh, side effect is try to control your side effect. Also, so side effect is uh, always an issue. Like writing to this faulty this like it happened to it happened to my one of my cases. Uh, this is faulty, but uh, it's reported to me that the the write is completed. So. Yeah. It's not part of the part of the other kind of logging check and balance. You have to like what I have to do is to do like after I write I have to do an integrity test and stuff. In the sense go so one of the things I keep bugging me is yeah, like, yeah uh, no exceptions. So please check your error messages. Uh yeah. If there's an error, please check it. Uh most likely uh if your code doesn't run, most likely because you did check your error. <laughs> Yeah, please check the error. And happen for to us also like easy memory corruption on ECC RAM. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how do you check them? Yeah, not, ECC. Not, not normal RAM. ECC. Did you get any like a Ferris precursor? Precursor. But there's a trigger like there's a trigger, but we don't know what's the cause. We we uh, found out from the server after the fact okay. that they actually detected corrupted uh, mm -hmm. So what they did was reboot the server. Okay. Great. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, uh, again, uh, the, the funny part is that uh, the solution after uh, doing a lot of weird things is remove one of the CPUs and it works. Can be some of the yeah, but why? <laughs> but it works. <laughs> those those yeah. tricky, stupid stuff. It only happens when it's uh, being used intensi intensively. Yeah. So. It, it passed man test, by the way. <laughs> Before you guys ask, ask man test. Yeah, you feel introduction. I don't know. So it's yeah. Yeah, those are the stuff that mainly uh function is very very easy to contain. Just contain your side effect in and out. Don't like uh as long as you format the code nicely, like orders or your function your function is very easy to benchmark. And you can find out. But uh like some of the external stuff like also the uh for people that first started uh Golang is also the database driver for Golang is very primitive. So by default it has unlimited collections. So what happened is uh because some people who started Go they get excited, like me many years ago. Uh I'll just spawn a lot of threads and do a lot of processing. And it's gonna exhaust the database connection and the database base will be blocked. <laughs> you cannot even like get into connect to the database. We Probably. have IO issues, right? No, the connection. the connection. Oh, the connection. Oh, we don't have automatically close yeah. your yeah. existing. So database. you have to set them up yourself properly. So uh uh cautionary when you do with a database, always set a uh, like always set a limit uh, for the yeah. idle con connection. So they don't have a uh, optimized so the HTTP body thing. They will also clear for you, right? No, it doesn't. Uh, if you uh, I'm not sure about the the version now, but uh, it used to happen to me is that uh, what I noticed is uh, <coughs> also via the profiler is if you post a a root file, let's say. Uh, it's, it's supposed to it's a part of post but I post something big and normally when the um, when it comes in um, it, it's not gonna be read but it's uh, 
it can be if it's small enough, it's gonna be contained in a sizable buffer. So if you want it to be really clear faster, you actually need to run uh, the response body close. They like at least defer response body closer for for the subsidable subsidable one, but I'm not sure whether it's uh, fixed nowadays. Last time it's like I can pose it and gonna take a chunk of memory. Of course, it's a streaming interface. It means that it's not the it, it doesn't it doesn't you cannot do more. But the chunk, the first chunk is there. So until you actually read it, it doesn't actually power. But also very dangerous is uh, <laughs> uh if you read it also like um if you don't. If you don't close it manually, it's gonna be some sort of like undefined behavior. Whether the compiler will cook, uh, in the runtime you close it for you during a uh, GC. Uh, what happened last time was uh, if it's gonna be clear up every five to ten minutes, you and you hope that no nothing happened. But if you want to con control everything, it's uh, better if uh, it's not that it's Golang the the GC part is high level, it's a high level thing, but the way we the way the control that Golang gives you is actually pretty low level. So uh, you have to find the balance between uh, how much control you want to exit. It gives you the power to do uh, a, a bit of optimization because it gives you kind of freedom to do for the optimization. But just like the database connection, uh, who knows that you, you run out of a <laughs> connection? Um, who knows that you're going to run out of uh, the the connection for your database. So for a powerful system might be oh there might be more vacant ports or you gotta be clear up much faster depending on because uh closing up um uh, it depends on how you tune your database your database might be closing up uh idle connection much more quickly and stuff. It gives you kind of a uh, freedom. But uh if you don't control that it's gonna give you a problem. <laughs> Same goes with the HTTP client, which is patched uh, during 1.13, but people also bitch about it. <laughs> uh, previously, the Golang uh, HTTP client doesn't close the connection. So they say, oh, you're gonna be, if you're gonna request a uh, service, it's gonna kill the service that provides you. But then they introduce a limit, a 20 second limit, then they say, it's too short for my service. So, so, uh, so specifically, is that the keep alive is actually reduced to 20, second. 20, second. 20 seconds. Before that, there's no keep alive, and it's actually assumed that the connection will be held indefinitely. Yeah. In other words, there's no time off. So, yeah, it's both a good and bad thing. So, it's a good thing because it's like, uh, yeah, you will never time off. You can keep continuing. The downside is just that uh, if you forgot to close it, the time up is uh, for those that are familiar with uh, but now this uh, this uh, pattern is very common even for Python is that you read your the data uh, in a certain buffer so it allows you to read the buffer you keep the connection open and read your buffer as you you're comfortable with it. so you don't like uh, you can control you can really limit the how, how fast you read the the body or the response, the response of it gives you the it gives you the freedom, but uh, pretty safe because uh, GC is there, but uh, the operation can be pretty low level and be careful if it can bite you back if you're not careful. With it. But don't don't worry too much. About <laughs> The worst problem that everybody uh, um, encountered, that the question that I encountered is the database one. Why my database will uh, stop receiving uh, uh, connections? That's the most uh, feedback I received over Facebook and some chat rooms. It also happened to me <laughs> many years ago. I definitely noticed that the official corpus slack. Uh, at least for Malaysia, it's not very active, so I think yeah. we should. Well, I should go up there regularly to say that we are not active. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a very useful uh, channel. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting Oh, things. okay. I didn't know. 
joining up. <laughs> I can even say like, uh, is anybody here? Then they're gonna leave. No, and then yeah. two months later, they can see like uh, me. Uh, we're not active. Please go to this chat room. <laughs> Did we not sticky? Yeah, I think it's don't go by Rick's it. Uh, we actually put the link to the Telegram. Right? We have a Telegram support group. If you're on Facebook, uh, it's actually here. I can. So I've not monitored Facebook, but uh, at least in the Go Telegram. I don't go. I will be a little bit more uh, active. Ivan is always posting. Yeah. Well, mostly about us. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine actually, you will learn about a lot of things. Yes, yes another question on Facebook, oh, sorry, on YouTube, yeah. if you want to. Yeah. So he's asking if the Go ABI is stable. What ABI is stable? ABI? No. The application that I. No. There's no ABI. Yeah. <laughs> C Go is not Go. Yeah. C Go is not Go. C Go is C. <laughs> Uh, I, I, the, the correct answer is just that it's uh, not of course, applicable. Of course, if there's a, of course, if a, it provides an API for a, for a pretty serious language, it's gonna, it gonna need a stable API. Even I like, did remember one thing about the Go2 proposal is to look into some sort of dynamic tooling like this or something. Oh, else. Uh, they actually had that, but yes. then they stopped doing anything with that. Okay. You can, but you know what? It only support uh, Linux. You can actually compile it as a, it's a shared object. But uh, I'm not sure the progress about it because somehow it gets quiet. Previously, the preview only works on Linux. Okay. Even Go Mobile is like go to quiet already. Yeah. Uh, it just didn't catch up. Uh. So there's uh, this. If you're on Facebook, check the description. Go like Malaysia. So there are links for the chat group. Uh, still pretty active, but any any serious language should have a stable API. <laughs> you just this rush rust. No, I think rust has a stable API. Yeah. Everything, oh, everything serious must everything that needs to work in production needs to have stable API, or else how people gonna. <coughs> I don't know, you ask the JavaScript people. <laughs> <laughs> the JavaScript also standardizing on the. It's Sorry, I have a, I have a dry ice. There's a question about API as in API. Binary. 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 Yeah. There's no so API. I have no idea. Run some iPhones, dude. No, it's fine. Thank you. The one thing that we did for this, I tried to, uh, what I actually uh, converted was, uh, I actually had a uh, using Sebo link to Rip Postal. So, in other words, uh, I can actually call a C module, C library for within Go. Uh, it ended up uh, when doing testing and doing all sorts of things, so it is actually easier and safer, faster, and everything else better. If I just spawn a copy of the command line uh, client that links to that particular C library instead and run the Go program as just uh, monitoring the input and output, the standard in and standard out of the C program, it turned out, it turned out to be uh, easier to program with, debug, and uh, scale. So, linking to the, the C library has uh, other issues because the, one of the issues was that the C library wasn't track safe. So that means is that I have to be very careful in Go not to call the C uh, functions multiple times. Whereas uh, if I use uh, uh, the, the standard inside of the pipe to a C program, I can literally just spawn multiple uh, uh, copies of the C program and to use a channel to communicate to it. So it's fine. Yeah, it's mem faster. Memory wise, it's still cheap in number. Yes. And also it means that if one of them misbehaves, I can kill the C program and you know, just respond my own. The guarantee for the C compiler, the simplicity of that is the only guarantee if you write only pure <coughs> Go. So if you write, that's why it's, uh, the, the saying is uh, C Go is not good because if you use C Go, you need to obey the C2J. So you do some like the cross compilation kind of a benefit like cross compilation, you have to make sure the two chain is there. Just like we do Sigo. In production, I think there's only two main reasons to use Sigo, SQLite, unfortunately, and BoxDB. 
Or Orkel. Fox TVs. <laughs> if you have Orkel, uh, something like Orkel, they're, they're not going to give you a Kodak like me. <laughs> so, uh, Orkel. Yeah, yeah. It's very painful to do that, but... <laughs> yeah. There's also a talk I uh, listened to where the guy did the other way around. So basically, he has this tool that's written from the uh, command line tool, and he wanted to uh, re-implement it in Go. And um, the approach he took was to write bits of it in Go and call it from Ruby as the yeah. external process. It's, it's a microservice that Unix made. It's quite flat. Yeah. Or VC or what? Or VC calling each other or what? Uh, no, just probably like it's a system. Show. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. The whole way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Ruby is inspired a lot by Chrome. That's why. That pattern is there. Yeah, Ruby is a post cursor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have the deck yet. <laughs> yeah, but Ruby is more stuff. Oh, also, there's Rails. Ruby is not Rails. Also, uh, because C go, because uh, go like interrupt with uh C easily, and there's a C go. So you can actually, if you want, you can actually compile your Golang to to C object. Then you can use it like SO. Yeah. Button. I still don't have a good answer to why. <laughs> oh, but there's one answer to this: GRPC. GRPC. Oh, so you have your custom client and servers supporting your own uh, like custom binary transfer. GRPC on web sucks. It's not GRPC. GRPC on web is not GRPC. <laughs> GRPC on, on web is uh I, I remember it's a translation it's a translation to JSON, right? I don't know if it's I know Google actually does uh, some translation because I saw it's like a web photobuff or some other weird stuff. Because they because GRPC on web they give if I'm the if I'm wrong uh, correct me on the internet. <laughs> um is that they give you a swagger they generate everything for you like because there's a spec they're gonna generate the, the swagger document for you very nicely as well <laughs> and they're gonna uh, they're gonna uh, format that uh, convert that into a json before serving it to the web so you still are doing rest but in yeah it's create a yeah you know. yeah you can create a rest for you right? Yeah. But you generate a uh, swagger for you nicely, so <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I don't use. It, it gives you a nice uh, it gen because uh, <coughs> the part itself is a uh, is a in its own markup and stuff. Yeah, you I know. know. Yeah, it can translate into you. Any anything? The one question that anyone has with the the can. Even kind of a message queue kind of thing. I, anyone have the experience with a comparison between Nets and Kafka using it for Nets? No, I mean just Nets. Bye, chat. Thanks. Repeat and queue and. Anyway, for for reference, uh, used to use Nets and queue. Not happy with. I mean, the features are brilliant. Uh, CPU usage is very annoying because uh, if you just rewrite the part that's not requiring the data and queue, it runs much faster to go in especially. Next. Voting actually exists in the uh, channel. Next is really nice. It's lightweight, embeddable, and support uh, TLS, end-to-end -end TLS. So, but uh, if you want consistency, because Next itself, the difference is that uh, Next itself is just a broker. It just, it's, it's just a broadcast. So, after it broadcast, it doesn't care whether you receive it or not. So if you need the guarantee, you need something called net streaming. So that has the guarantee, but you need to provide it a storage layer because it needs to have the guarantee. So the guarantee is how you define your rules. Huh? I use Kafka, but I never use Net. That's why I, I, I asked about that. Uh, if Kafka, if Kafka, Kafka works for you, then just stick with Kafka. But it's a bit complicated. Huh? That's uh, why Kafka. That's why uh, Kafka. <laughs> every, even Net is, uh, has its own complications. Uh, yeah, I haven't tried that. That's fine. It's uh, there's some there's some catches. I'm not sure if they improve on the documentation, but uh, there's some cat catches as well. Mm. So like by by default, the one of the problem is by default the net streaming actually runs on memory. 
So your message size is actually due to the your your memory size somewhere. But I like how simple and available it is, and it support uh, pretty much uh, because of Golang, uh, pretty much modern uh, KOS, uh, end to end KOS. So that is very important for me because we do cross data center kind of uh, transfer. Depends on what you're looking for the message well, I'm using a lot of, uh, right now my project is doing the ETL, so I use a lot of, uh, I use Kafka because, uh, like you said, it's a function that I can replay, I can do a simple ETL using the KC code they put it in uh, the Kafka. But just recently I encountered the net, but then when I read net, net is, like you say, it's about like fire forget, yeah. right? But then they talk about net streaming. Yeah. But then I'm not sure how, how good is that streaming company. It's very big. It's any it's uh if you want the freedom of doing a bit of custom modification uh, to the to how it works, then it might suit you. But if you want everything that like Kafka or Rapid MQ, uh you better stick with them. Because it's still very much bare bones. Is it multiple server? Yes, multiple droplet. Yeah. It's very pain for you to say. Yes, mm -hmm. how to configure it yeah. and how to actually um, it, you know. Might not be mutual exclusive, but uh, yeah, I mean, those you can use NAS as a transport layer, probably not not necessary. Then you have something like a persistent layer to make sure the contract. Okay. Uh, depends on patterns of you use. NAS is actually very free, like the in terms of uh, it supports like replay and I mean, re, I mean, like uh, those uh, request and response, uh, RPC like kind of call. <laughs> It, it depends on how you use it, but it was built for me. Uh, my in my opinion is that it it is built to if you want something custom, you want a bit more freedom to on how to use it. Then, you can. but don't expect any like nice feature from it. Yeah. Also, it's a uh, net streaming is a bit rougher. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Right. Did you try it for it? Yeah. Uh, we tried it in the very now now they say improve the. The good thing is, uh, it actually the project is very active, both of them. Yeah. So and they improve it from time to time. So, but it's still a very bare bone kind of thing. People do build products on top. Of it. Okay. So it's for it's a like a just like a product buff. So you can build stuff with it, like GRC is a product. Mm -hmm. So next is like for me is the uh, the building blocks of consumer. Okay. But compared to like uh, just a uh, rest kind of call yeah. and Kafka yeah. uh, part the most difficult part because they have like a two cluster. One is like for all the people actually another Kafka cluster just to manage the Kafka cluster. So you can see how yeah. it gets. Uh, check it out. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you're really interested, check it out because uh, next streaming actually support P two P. Okay. So yeah. that's one of the things that I really like about. What is P2P in the syntax? So the Proclus you mean? Uh, not Proclus, it's actually uh, like multi-master. Okay. Oh. So, it, but it's, it's very dependent on how you set it up. You have to read the docs, like sometimes uh, even if the docs is not clear, like what happened to me, I have to check the source code on how it, how it works. So this strategy or like one so, yeah. Yeah, so, form? Yeah, how do you set it up? Yeah. So they don't have a different uh, cluster just to manage the uh the the storage part is actually abstracted you can write your own driver that's why like, i say it's very, it feels very much like a building block it's just there you can just like uh like the skeleton of car you can put whatever on top of it to make it into a whole car but that's the what's the feeling to me so if you fire forget uh next is very nice very performance very lightweight I should give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, one thing, even though I was complaining about it, uh, Rapid IQ has pretty nice interfaces yeah. that allows you to be able to yeah. inspect the work that's actually uh, the pipe uh, that is changing time. Yeah. So for debugging purposes, I actually quite like Rapid IQ. The ratio of performance. The replay is definitely yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going away from like the MQ or which uh, you know the, the traditional MQ. Right? I mean I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. I don't know. I mean since I'm using Google, uh -huh. a lot of times I actually discover that uh, if you don't need it, 
using channels as a budding light green and yeah. doing the same survey with like more calls is so much faster than fancy and it's like or whatever. So we can get away with a lot of yes. if you just use uh, channels and uh, 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 both things. So, yeah. Just remember to close, always remember to close your channel. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, deadlock is actually possible. And if fortunate, if you're fortunate, your program will crash. If you're not fortunate, your program will stall. <laughs> that, that's the not fortunate one. Crashing is actually much better than just not receiving, not able to do anything but still receive stuff. Especially when you set up a buffer channel, if it's still within the buffer, that buffer limit, you still gonna receive connection, but it's not gonna do anything. So be really careful. <laughs> Always drain, remember to drain them. <laughs> but it's uh, getting basically getting used to the language. Um, channel uh, beside the unsafe and interfacing, channel and map are basically very dangerous because the compiler did, cannot check for it during compile time. Any kind of uh, error. And what? Channel and map. Oh. You have to yeah. locate the channels and, yeah, and the map. Yeah. Before using it. It's a bit and hard. during errors, yeah. errors during uh, during like uh, using channel and stuff. Also, uh, the compiler cannot help you. <laughs> so the safety is within if you use it like the normal vanilla. Once you go out, that is uh. So basically how familiar you are. Just check it. I forgot how to What color? Huh? Okay, let me check how to make sure that uh, at least uh, someone has you know, something. Oh, you know, just up there. Yeah, okay, I think we can. Yeah. Uh, is there any uh, suggestions or topics, or yeah. anyone want to present something? Present or what to do? Uh, uh, also, is this uh, any uh, <coughs> opportunity? No regulars or no one has been presenting. Is that uh, we still have some flashies uh, to do? Okay, you have to emphasize it. You have to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, I played it. Whoever that speaks has a goal. Have has, has a goal. How many have you had now? I don't know. <laughs> Michael Carroll. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> I need to copy my character for three months. So if you guys have any uh, want to talk or have any suggestion on uh, what to do, official go go first. Where are the speaks? Yeah. <laughs> Where are the speaks? So, uh, yeah, definitely it's just that, uh, uh, especially uh, I think compared to the beginning of the year or even last year, it's just that we have been steadily uh, getting more advanced Go topic things. Because in the beginning it was uh, getting everyone used to Go, uh, uh, in the beginning as well as that a lot of uh, people who <coughs> Go, we so did I almost two years of tutorial. <laughs> it's only uh, recently uh, everyone's getting more familiar and more uh, advanced topics that uh, we can actually uh, introduce in this. Yeah, that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we started at uh, 2014. <laughs> what? 2014. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, five and six because uh, I think we stopped and then. Also, I didn't do talk. Uh. Dave, Dave did a lot of talk. Dave and Eric. And then gradually. Uh, any specific type of topics that you guys uh, are going to be debugging and optimization on the uh, Any other topics that you guys, anyone do else? I have some more. Why Go teams? What is the, I don't know, what are topics? Pipelines in Go. Uh, that's not what we do. Go. Because we use that thing, lah. Okay, write your load balancer in uh, five seconds. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
The C is again. Uh, <laughs> you guys want to see how easy to write a load balancer? Ignore the recent article that is too long. I can show you how to write a very easy load balancer in like two things. Reverse proxy, is it? No, uh, that, that, that reverse proxy, and but uh, even a simple one, like, uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to do it. Yes. No, just just standard library. That's yeah, just standard library. So I'm gonna just simply create a, a I call it Robin. I'm gonna do a simple run Robin. I actually wrote it a lot of times, but since there are new faces, <laughs> okay. Uh, ignore this. So I'm gonna show you the app itself is a uh, what do I have a message? I'm gonna create something like this. Show you a different way of doing. I just add this is to fulfill the HTTP. <laughs> uh, this is actually like HTTP. I, I did it a lot of time. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, FMT, FPRIN, W, A. One of the thing, funny things that I find about this library is like, why is the reader pointer the right? The pointer is not a pointer. It's actually a pointer. Interface is a pointer, but uh, but it might contain other ch uh, child method. An interface is actually a pointer that fulfill that particular uh, that particular method. So so it means that I can have my I can write my own special response writer with more function inside. Uh, okay. Okay, I have two app. App one. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a factory as well. <laughs> New. App. Search. <coughs> just for the just for vanity. App one. App two. Uh, do a few more. Sorry, see. Huh? Uh, so um <coughs> I've got an app la, just like this. La. Oh. So I have a Robin as well. Sing with text. Position I in. Then the apps. Uh, Mute text is uh, safe to use, uh, uninitiated, but do not copy around. So, uh, Robin. So I have the link. Oh, I don't need to this. I just need to provide. Ah, it's just fine. Uh, I is zero. Zero. I I is always. Ah, just app. Apps is apps. So my Robin needs to be. Ah. Uh, Especially be. So, uh, R lock, defer R, R lock, and A, A, R, I, plus plus. Oh no. And defer R, R plus one. Oh, 
Sorry, come on. Never get. Never get. How about Pang? So. Oh, Bruno is stolen. So, uh, R, F. R, I. Wait, what is faster? Oh, okay. no, 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 it's this. You can always use, uh, since if the size is 4, you can use an N. Finally, open it. Oh, ah, uh, then, bin. Be careful. Ah, damn. Can you play the most? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and serve. Let's say, <coughs> and I can just throw Robin into that magic. Always check your error. Why yeah. apps? Uh, because the variable apps. Okay. Let's run it. See, now Robin. If you have a reverse proxy, you have a reverse proxy. It doesn't matter because as long as it is a handler, you can support that. So go run. Oh shit! In apps, uh, apps, apps. Yeah, read the warning. Okay, no rate. Okay, now. Because I don't want to use Chrome because it's uh, you always catch it. D A T F one F two F three F four F one. See, wrong of it. So easy. <laughs> Done. <laughs> it's for myself and Katie. So, uh, as long as it support this, you can have uh because I can actually replace it with a handler. This is on the app. So I can have a handler. Let's say this app is different. This is a, a target URL pass localhost eight thousand. Uh, if error, uh, do not try to panic. Uh, elsewhere because it's main, so it's fine for me to panic. Uh, my my convention is a. Uh, the HTTP, YouTube, uh, new single host reverse proxy. Yes. So instead of this, I'm going to replace it to the <coughs> interface. Done. Okay. Let's start it again. Let's start. Let's start. Uh, let's start Python. Uh, eight thousand. So restart the app. Say, no new word for sixty. Oh, because I have error. Okay. One, two, three, four. Real proxy. Uh, naive round of it. So, uh, in this case, like, so you see, because this is a handler, so it can just accept it as a handler. So you can have your own abstraction uh, with your different engine and stuff. And this is also how you do uh, like a uh, function chaining middleware without using actually third party stuff because you can just chain as long as the handler and you accept handler, you can chain them together. Or on standard library. <laughs> I do this often. <laughs> like Michael always seen it a, a hundred times <laughs> uh, because I think this is uh, very important on showing some of the capabilities of uh, like Golang very important so how you want to make it more performant you can have scoring and stuff to make it like nicer like scoring and then uh, do how to and also you can do like very evil stuff like I can wrap you see I can wrap this, let's say I want to do a wrapper. Wrap handler and produce a handler. handler. So return handler fine. See, I can, as long as I'm returning what it looks like the same, it's like duck typing. 
so I can actually do wait, handle handle down. So I can do uh before I continue to do this. I can do let's say what should I do? Okay. No, I just I can do like a manipulation like just also like uh also to print <coughs> stuff like evil stuff. I, I'm gonna just as simple as wrapping this. See, middleware is actually very easy. Do not believe what people tell you. Like you, you have to use this library and stuff. But uh, but of course there are more better performance. But uh, if you really need it, you actually one. See, I get evil stuff instead of this. And if you want, it's slightly more complicated. Which I'm not gonna do this. You can also intercept this. That's why like you have you can have your response writer to actually write it to a buffer. Then you do a package shaping, like I want to remove certain thing, I want to throw away uh, this and that, and then I serve it back. So that's why it's a, that's why it's an in interface. And the hash response writer interface is actually, if you notice, it has a write, means that it supports a write interface, uh, writer interface, so that any uh, function that supports a writer interface can write to the your response writer. So that is OCD. Uh, ignore this. This see I'm evil stuff. <laughs> this one. <laughs> if you guys actually do like this, then it's pretty easy for us to wrap. It's very easy in, in in this case to write a client for an existing API as well, and also to like if I if you want to be lazy, you can just do a wrapper and act, like probably I just uh I have a private API private API, but I want to do a wrapper that uh like abstraction. I like I don't want my junior to actually access whatever private API we have. I mean the API key. I just inject the API key from. This proxy. I mean, uh, you can still do it in uh, with engine and stuff, but uh, if you want something more custom, you have the freedom to do it very easily in Google. We do traffic checking. <laughs> I can in, like uh, we inject stuff, inject JavaScript to some response from our client, so that we don't have to touch the client's code to do stuff from there. Then. So that you run our JavaScript <laughs> to provide the new feature instead of uh, having to oh uh, request for permission to oh can I access your system get the source code and how do I deploy that something? Like enterprise <laughs> feature. <that's laughs> <the> web application <laughs> Very bad if you don't auto document it because after two or three years you can forget about the logic. Then you don't know like where where the hell I inject this. <laughs> but please document them. <laughs> But that's what happened to some of the project that we cannot touch. But we want to add functionalities. You can you can also like if you want to be itchy, like uh let's say the client provides XML, like my like the juniors doesn't know how to work with XML, I'm gonna just uh, do a translation to JSON. Uh transparently. You can, you can write like that's why microservices or this kind of uh, I don't know what to call it, this kind of services is uh, pretty much uh, very easy to do. The footprint is very light. Uh, uh, Golang, the binary size is big, but the footprint is actually uh, memory footprint. Is, uh, normally, if you perform, uh, it will be less than 100 Mac. If you, it's very, for me, it's uh, very seldom that it exceeds more than 10 to 50. It depends on how much, how much you want to push. Uh. Sometimes you want to, it will be bigger because you want to support a bigger buffer for certain things. Footprint is very low. Something to share is I, I, I rewrote my Discord board from Node.js to Go and it literally the memory assumptions reduce like 10x. <laughs> yep, that's a... So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm using a library that has the connections, um, that already done the connections, so it's quite efficient to create a Go routine to dispatch the messages up from here. Do you want me to talk about it? Uh, you can go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
uh, I'm done. <laughs> so if anybody wants to add anything, uh, feel free to. I think we should just wind down. Uh, do we want to take a, what's a good background? Picture for Golden Tank? Yeah. Yes, yes.